Good morning. Thank you, Lori, uh, and thank each of you for being here. Uh, what I'm going to do this morning is talk to you a little bit about a specific part of cybersecurity, and that's website security. It's, it's kind of a subset because there are lots of websites and lots of companies have websites, and a lot of people who have websites don't realize what a threat cyber criminals are to their website. And as an example, this is the National Cyber Security Alliance. And they say that 60% of small businesses that suffer a cyber attack will fail within six months. And so the, bo the bottom line on that is small businesses can't really afford to get hacked. At the same time, we know that in the United States, 33,000 websites get successfully hacked every day. That's 12 million websites a year. So we're frequently asked, why do they do this? Why are hackers hacking websites? And the answer is because they're thieves, they're criminals. What do they steal? In 2017, hackers stole $172 billion. And this is, this is cash stolen. This is not the cost of repairing a website that's been hacked or um, the, the loss of credit card information for customers, none of that. This is actual dollars that they stole. In 2018, the best estimate is that it was about $216 billion. This year, it's probably over $250 billion. So what you're dealing with today is a sophisticated global industry. <clears throat> The FBI says hackers can hack any website. There is no such thing as a website that can't be hacked. And I like to use the analogy that a website is a little bit like a truck stop on I-95. It's open 724. There are lots of ways in, lots of ways out. It can't really close. So it's available to hackers seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And, and to a hacker, and Lori and I were talking about this a few minutes ago, I, I use the analogy, and I hope none of you are real estate agents, but a guy that was a client of mine who was a realtor years ago once told me, he said, Ted, you need to understand that to a realtor, your house is inventory. It's something that they sell for you to make money, or they help you buy to make money. But your home is, is inventory to a realtor. Well, to a hacker... Your website is just a piece of inventory. They don't care what your business is. They don't care how small you are. None of that matters. So what are they stealing when they compromise a website? When they get inside a website, they're going to take some time just to watch what's going on to make some decisions about what can I steal? And here are the kinds of things that they steal. <clears throat> credit card information for online transactions. They'll get your name, your address, your credit card number, the CVV number off the back of the card, your PIN, whatever. And then they'll use that for online transactions. Contact information and passwords. Uh, for example, if you bank online with your bank account, you have a bank account ID and a password. Well, at the same time, once they get in and they get that information, they're going to get your social security number. They're going to get all of that, all your personal information. Login information to take over servers. This is a big one because if you actually have a business that has a server, they'll just watch until they see what the administrative passwords are for your server. They'll get into your server and then they'll use your server for their criminal activity without you even knowing that they're on your server. It, it acts as a cutout for them so that they're blind because it looks like what's happening, what they're doing is coming from you because it's coming from your server. Classified information. If you are a company that does business 
defense contracts, anything like that, they'll go for classified information. They'll go for competitive business information if it has any value. Or they can get information for a targeted attack. So one, all of this is really about them making money using your website as a way to do that. McAfee says that the international illegal drug trade is a $400 billion a year industry. Cybercrime is a $600 billion a year industry. It's 50% bigger than the illegal <coughs> drug trade. So Laura, Laura and I were talking about it, and her comment is, so it's not going away. You bet it's not going away because it is so profitable and there is so much money involved that they're just going to keep doing what they're doing. The system that we've built at MadTech, we call it Intrusions, which is an intrusion detection system, works on 1 billion of the 1.3 billion websites that are on the World Wide Web today. That's too big a market for us. So initially what we've done is we've set up, and some of you here in Fayetteville might be familiar with this, we've set up what's it's a service-disabled veteran-owned small business called Corvso. And what we'll be doing with Corvso is we will be working with the government markets, federal, state, and local agencies on website security. We'll also be doing other cybersecurity things for these same clients. Next question that we think comes up, how will you find out your website's been hacked? And one of the things that we find is when cyber criminals get into a website, just like a burglar, they don't want to be detected. They want to have as much time as possible to learn what's going on, to learn how they can use that particular website. So once they get there, they'll just park and watch what's going on. So the longer a hacker is in a website, the harder they are to get rid of. The harder it is to clean that website once you find out that it's been hacked. So we say that your best defense in a world where any website can be hacked is early detection. The sooner you find out they're there, the better, because the less damage they will have been able to do and the less cost will be involved in uh, cleaning up and restoring the website. So that's what we do. Our business is what we call secure early detection. So how do we do that? When someone signs up for the service, we scan their website. And we send them an email with a list of all of the files on that website. Then every day, we scan it again. We scan it from up in the cloud on our secure servers. If anything changes on that website, we let you know. New files, change files, deleted files, anything like that. I call it kind of a motion detector for a website. Anything moves on that website, we find out, and we find out within 24 hours. And then we let you know. If you want us to, we will look at those reports as they come out of our system every day, and we'll tell you if we think you've been hacked. If you give us access to your log files on your website, we can examine the log files and the data that we get out of our scans, and we can probably locate how the hacker got in. Because one of the things that you want to do when you clean up a website that's been hacked, you don't want to clean it up, put it back on the web. Two weeks later, the bad guys come back and come in the same door they came in when they got in before. So that's, that's what we do now. There are, I, I asked the question, what we lawyers call a rhetorical question, which is, how will you find out if your website's been hacked? One way is, is the way that I just said, we can basically most probably high likelihood tell you if you've been hacked, if we're monitoring what's going on on the website. Here's another way to find out. This is not a good way. 
This is a Google blacklist stream. This is what happens if Google finds out that your website is being used by hackers for malicious purposes. When, when I go to log on to your website, rather than going to your website, I get this screen from Google. It says, you might not want to go on to this particular website because if you do, you may download ransomware or something else may happen to your computer by virtue of your visiting. That's what the blacklist is. Google says that when a site gets listed as blacklisted, it loses 95% of its traffic. So if a website is important to a business, especially one where there's a shopping cart where people come and buy things, you lose 95% of your traffic. It's a, it's a bad day. So then you have the expense of cleaning up the website, but you also have the expense and the time of negotiating with Google to get the blacklisting removed. And there are other blacklisting agencies. Norton, uh, the security company, is a, is a blacklisting agency. McAfee is another blacklisting agency. <coughs> so you can end up in a situation where your website gets hacked by these guys, and you have to clean it up with the time and money that that takes Plus, you have to negotiate with all the blacklisting agencies before you can get it back active on the web. Here's a really bad way to find out what's going on on your website. This generally happens when someone finds out that they've been the victim of identity theft. And they start backtracking to see how did this happen, and they find out that how it happened is their information got compromised off the website. How many people sitting out here, if you'd raise your hands, how many of you know what the dark web is? Okay, three or four. This is a, this is a screenshot from the dark web. This is basically a website on the dark web that's a shopping cart. Criminals can go on the dark web, and this is all the stuff that they can buy. This one, for example, whoops, bank account information, CVV and cards. I love this one right here. I can't read it from here, so I'll have to move. It says, high balance dump USA and Canada cards, uh, credit and debit cards, Instant delivery, freshly skimmed, 25 bucks. I put an arrow down here because this is where you can buy software and malware. This is where hackers go to buy hacks that other hackers have created. And so the first hacker that came up with a way to get into your website, he posts it on the dark web, he sells it, he makes more money that way, and then the guys that he sells it to will get into the website to do whatever it is that they want to do. So it's, I think it's important for all of us to realize this is what happens frequently with the information that the bad guys take off your website or find through your website. There's another example. This one, I highlighted the, again, software. Uh, right here we've got uh, selling credit cards again, and, and right over here we've got a uh, half ounce of cartel cocaine, uh, free shipping, I think it's 46 euros. So basically the dark web is a shopping cart for everything illegal. Uh, there are weapons on here, um, digital products, you name it, drugs and chemicals. All this stuff can be bought on the dark web, and that's where cyber criminals will go to A, sell the information that they get off your website, and buy the information that they need to hack other websites. So we say that people who have websites in this environment today have a, have a choice to make. You can either roll the dice and take your chances and hope that your website doesn't get hacked, or you can set up what we call endpoint security. We use, like we have, most of our websites are WordPress websites. So we use WordFence, which is a good first line of defense 
It stops a lot of attacks coming in on our websites. But what we also believe in, and we think everybody should be thinking about, is defense in depth. Because WordFence will not stop all the attacks that are coming at your website. So what we do then with our system is we say, okay, anything gets through, you'll know about it within 24 hours. Actually, you'll probably know if it happens during the night, you'll know the next morning because we'll send you an alert and say, okay, this is what happened. So that's basically what we're doing. This is us. Uh, I'm a Duke Law School graduate, Vietnam veteran, <coughs> top secret cryptographic control officer, and I taught at the Army Intelligence School. I was involved in taking two companies in Seattle, Washington to th liquidity through selling the companies. I've been working with information technology since before many of you were born. Uh, Jesse is a career software engineer, IT manager, uh, master's in computer science from Georgia Tech, cybersecurity consultant for Wells Fargo, <coughs> Credit Suisse, Cisco, companies like that, and a serial entrepreneur. So that's us. That's what we do. Uh, we learned when we presented at the uh, Million Cups in the RTP it's a good idea to come with asks. So we have some asks, and that is we are very interested in finding veterans who are coming out of the military or who are already out, who have technical skills um, to work with us. Uh, the interpretive work that we do is, is labor intensive, so we'll be looking for a significant number of people as we get into more and more of that. So we're happy to find out programs or resources, people that we can talk to who would have those kinds of connections. Um, I would also love to get some leads to some contracting officers uh, just to talk with them about what are the four or five things that they really appreciate from their vendors and what are the four or five things that they really hate it when they, when they see their vendors do it. Uh, so I've always taken the position that when I work with somebody, I want to be I want to make their life easier. I want to make their job easier, not harder. So I'd, I'd really like those kinds of uh, leads. Questions? Yes, sir. I came in late, so you may have covered this at the beginning of your talk. Um, how does your software work? Do you, you install it on like single node servers or more complicated architectures? Okay, good, good question. Um, our system is up in the cloud. You install a client as a plug-in on your website. If you have a, I mean, we have a certified uh, WordPress plug-in, so if you have a WordPress site, uh, you go right to your dashboard and just download it and install it like any other plug-in. When you do that, uh, there's an activation involved because we have some fairly sophisticated encryption going back and forth at that point between your machine and our servers in the cloud to make it, we've hardened that a lot to make it really difficult for anybody to follow that stream of data coming back up. Number one, it's metadata when we take it off your site and it's encrypted, then we send it up to the cloud then the next day when we scan again, what we do is we do a, a diff scan between yesterday and today and find out everything that's changed and then we let you know. Did I answer your question? Yes. Um, it sounds like it's a, it's a PHP plugin for WordPress. I'm sorry? Yeah, I assume it's coded in PHP. Yes. It is a plugin for WordPress. WordPress is PHP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what if someone's got a uh, server that's not WordPress? What if it's just Apache or, or uh, Microsoft? Or one of the other okay, that's why I, I did. I said earlier that there are 1.3 billion websites on the web, and we work on a billion of them, and that's because we work on any PHP built, any PHP based website. Now, on a PHP that's not WordPress, you're not going to be able to do the automatic install. You're going to have to go through if it's Joomla or Drupal or something like that. You're going to have to go through a manual install, but you can you can still do it if you know how to work your own dashboard. 
uh, you can go on our site and, and download the client and install it and go through the same activation process. It's a custom built website. Do you have to be like an API that you can use to integrate it into a blog post? Or is Sorry, it there? What was that again? It, it, is, is your software independent of the code that's running on the server, or does it have to? Like, if you have your own software, everything is completely custom. Do you have to integrate it through whatever your API is? So we. Um, we built the WordPress plugin set for those people of WordPress in the size of the WordPress market and to make it easier to install. But at the same time, we developed what we call a generic client. So you would upload the generic client, talk to it, and then it activates back with us. Now, that API right now is only really used by us. Mostly to do activation. Our scans are from an external scanner. And what the client does is uh, it looks at PHP files, JavaScript, and CSS, and it does a digital signature on those. Uh, because uh -huh. of the way websites work, graphics files and all of those, we just keep track of timestamps for those now. Uh, but yeah, you can, uh, for this reason, because a lot of, there's a lot of people that have built custom PHP websites. They're not Joomla, they're not Drupal, they're not WordPress. And that's how you would get this capability on those sites. Just put the client on there and, and activate it. Is it running when there are no requests on the server, or does it depend on the request to run some of the code at that time? Our external scanner wakes up and fetches, talks to the client. So the client's just sitting there. So we, and the reason we keep files, scan data off-site is because a hacker got into your site and they tinker with our code or they tinker with some of your other stuff to disable it, it's hard for them to, to fake us out. Interrupt with one more conversation. Yes, sir. The, uh, the cloud service, the AWS, Amazon Web Service, uh, that's who you use? Actually, we use Rackspace. We're using Rackspace right now. How, how do you, how do you, what's your revenue model? Um, revenue model is depends on whether it's an enterprise or a consumer. Uh, for consumer, it, right now it's nine dollars a month. Um, if we have someone who's uh, a website administrator, that's for example we're running a bunch of websites, a bunch of WordPress sites, and they want to talk to us about a license to be able to do 10, 15, 20, then of course that price will come down. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. First, let's talk about your ask. Um, one of you were talking about getting connected with some contractors. My suggestion mm -hmm. is on campus here, we have the North Carolina Military Business Center, mm -hmm. who have a lot of great contacts that you can work with them, and they can kind of um, get you some of that information you're looking for, at least put you in contact with some of the information you were talking about with the vendors and things like that. So I highly encourage you to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember, your first ask was you were looking for some help. Technical help. Like you said, labor intensive. I assume the people were asking. Is that correct? Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. There are. There are. One of the things that we're going to be able to do. We're going to work virtually. Mm -hmm. Which means, if there are veterans, for example, coming out who want to go home, wherever home might be, uh, if they want to work with us, that will be fine because they can work remotely, as okay. long as they have you know, fairly high-speed internet access. Okay. So, yes. All right, so my second part of that, before I get to my ask, is um, on this campus we have a program of cybersecurity. It's one of the nationally recognized programs in the country, which is uh, saying a lot for community college because we are, I think, the only one that's got that recognition. So I can put you in contact with the dean over that program to so talk about maybe some student internships or hiring some graduates. And they also are part of what we call our transition tech program for people coming out of the military. They help them get up to speed in the civilian world so they can go out and we have programs like that. So I'd be more than happy to put you in contact with the dean or Yeah, we're, we're absolutely going to want to talk offline with you. Okay. All right, now here's my answer. <laughs> for a business that has just gotten started or is a little bit underway, who doesn't, they, they don't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. but they need to get started. And of course, today's world, your ability will be 
competitive outside of your local community and bricks and mortar, you need a website. Right. What would you recommend for those who are on a very limited budget trying to get their business launched to be safe so they don't fall victim to immediately being cannibalized? I've got a website for a novel that I wrote. Mm -hmm. So when we put that website up, when we first put it online, we installed the intrusion system on it. I get, a, I get because I have automatic update turned on with WordPress on that site, because it's a WordPress site, WordPress checks that site every night, and they touch five files. So every morning, with my cup of coffee, I open that email to see what happened on my website last night. As long as those five files got touched and nothing else happened, I know now that's normal behavior for my website. In September, WordPress did a major uh, upgrade, and that morning I opened that web that with my cup of coffee, and I found that they had added 879 new files, 400 and some odd uh, change files, and 50 some files were deleted. So I call this guy and I say, "What happened to my website last night?" Because that's that's way abnormal behavior. So the answer to your question is what we recommend is if you're going to put a website on the web, the best time to add our system is right then. Because that way we know we've got a clean baseline. So it's going to cost $100 a year. Um, you, can, you can get, there's a free version of WordFence, isn't there? There is. So you can get a free version of WordFence, which we use, and then as Jesse says, we eat our own dog food. So all of our websites, we've got our system, so we get the reports that says that something's happened. So the, the answer to your question, if, it, if it's a WordPress website, you can get WordPress for free, and then you can get ours for 100 bucks a year, and it's just a decision, do you want to spend 100 bucks a year to know what's going on on your website on a daily basis? I'll look to that. When, if I'm that small business owner that has a limited budget, which I think that's a hundred dollars well spent, days well, especially when you come at ninety five percent, you lose traffic. And trust me, if I get to a site like that that comes up, I'm not going back. But if I, if you guys detect something, do you provide also a service to help that small business owner fix it or resolve it? Or I mean, what beyond telling me that it's, that's happened, what do you offer to the uh, small business owner in terms of either? Repair or fixing holes or what? Does that make sense? What I'm asking. You want me to answer? Yeah, that? I'll let Jesse take um, that one because he's he's done exactly what you're talking about. That, that that kind of work is what uh, what prompted me. I used to have a web hosting business and a lot of them were WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla, and all three of them would get hacked. And I'd have to go. People would come to our company after they've been hacked. So can you clean this up and then put it on there and then protect it? So, uh, yes, we uh, we started off with the plug-in first, but we have the capability to help remediate it. Uh, especially if you've, if you've installed intrusions on it, then what we'll know what they did because these guys get in, if they're putting files on your site, I've seen them, I've seen them hit 100, 200 different files and put malware in each and every one of them. So manually trying to go through and find malware on all of your files that might have been compromised is very labor intensive and prone to error. Because if you miss one, then they're just going to go talk to that one again and, and you effectively have to fix the problem. So knowing what changed on the site is really essential to being able to do that quickly. And you can find out, okay, what part of my site got compromised if you look at the web logs, you'll see based on the timestamps exactly when they got in and what attack that they used to get in on. So that's what we do and then we can uh, say, oh, you know, it just depends on what you got on the site. You can fix this, 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 and this. And we'll clean it up and then this, these updates need to be made with the, the, the fixes that are in the Yeah, to, to give you an example, when the target system hack took place, uh, 
those guys got in and they were on target system for over 200 days before they were discovered. And they actually got in, and Target hasn't released a lot of information, but the way that they got into the Target systems was through Target's HVAC heating and air conditioning vendor. Because the heating and air conditioning vendor had a portal through the firewall to, the, to monitor what was going on on the HVAC system. So what they did was they hacked the HVA system guys, then they used that to get into Target, and then they just sat around until they found out who the administrators were for the point of, point of sale system, and they got on the point of sale system, and that's when they started collecting all the 40 million credit cards that they got. So time is a big deal to hackers, which is why we say early detection is so important, because like Jesse says, if we know that what they did, they did in the last 24 hours, and we know exactly what they did, it's way easier to clean it up than if I've got to go where they got in six months ago, and now I've got to check six months' worth of files every day to see what they did. How do you uh, account for new updates on a website? Is that being changed either dynamically because of code or because uh, developers have created some portion of the website? So that's a change that's not a that's a legitimate change. Yeah. So you all you do have the you do have the chore if you're a website owner of differentiating between a malicious change and a legitimate change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it, it it's you're gonna be dealing with a really sophisticated hacker <clears throat> if they know exactly when your website's gonna get updated such that they try to slip in at that time. So if you see these big changes like Ted was talking about, you know, seven hundred new files, 400 change and what, you go and you say, oh, I've got WordPress auto update on, and you look at, and you know what your WordPress version was, and you're pretty safe at that point that a hacker would have had to know exactly when that was going down on your website to try to, to, try to hide. And, and uh, now, when you got that many files, you may not feel, you still don't feel comfortable uh, you can go through looking for suspicious file names. That's kind of down the road on a roadmap for us to put some machine intelligence in this uh, to to assist in determining if that's really legit and it's not a, what some people would call a false positive. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that doing this with artificial intelligence or, or having a machine do it right now, the capability is just not really there to do it. Because You've got to differentiate between legitimate files and, and hacker files, and it's it's a it's a tough nut to crack. That's why it, that's why it's going to take people. So your scanner basically goes an index of the website at a given moment, and then the next scan is new index of the previous index. Yep. File by file. Yes, sir. I've got a WordPress-based uh, website uh, which I've had for about three or four years. I've never noticed any any tinkering with it, uh, except it gets I get some off-the-wall blog. About every day, there'd be some crazy stuff popping in there. Uh, what would be the sign that I had been hacked? Is something I could? Read? I missed the first part of your presentation, so I got it late. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I'm going to let Jesse, but I want to I'm going to give you one quick answer, and that is, before Jesse developed this system, MadTech was hosting websites, and some guys got into one of the websites. I think there were maybe ten of them at that time, and with that. With our hosting vendor, we had email limits. I think it was like 100,000 emails a day or something like that. Well, these guys got into that one website, and they sent out tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of spam emails. And they sent out so many that they tripped our, host, our hosting vendor's Limit. limits and shut down all 10 websites. So... If, if they had been smarter and maybe only sent out 50,000 a day, we don't know how long it would have been before we would have found out. But they just happened to go over the limits and shut all of our websites down, and that's how we found out it had happened. So the answer to your question is, if you don't have something like what we're doing, it's very difficult to find out that your website is being used. Out like that. Yeah, or you can find out when you get blacklisted. I don't, but I don't keep any sales information, no, no uh, business information, except for it's information, it's functional information on my website. No, no, 
no business information. Yeah, but so your website is like a pickup truck <clears throat> to them. But they they, they can use it. They don't care. And you'll never know. Like Bank of America pages, the fake Bank of America pages, you'll never know they're there. But I go to the website almost every day. You won't see it. Ooh. But you don't know it. You can't navigate through your website to that page. It's not through your normal links on your website. Who will see it? Anybody else? Somebody who gets an email with a link to that page. So what that is is a phishing site. Google looks for those. If they can scan spider with side, then you'll see blacklist uh, due to that that catch uh, malicious phishing pages on your site. So uh, that's one thing. They can also place a file there that they want to use your website for malicious purposes. Other. So if I have Google, I was advised recently, based on a tip from this uh, meeting site here, to get my get Google's analytics. Would that help help solve that or not? That's not a security tool that a lot of people. Uh, it, it can be used because you can see the traffic. So it, you might be able to see fetches clicks on that page in there. Uh, you'd have to know exactly where to look for it, but uh, it should show up on Google Analytics. That, that, I don't know if you've ever used it. Um, you haven't used that tool, have you? I'm in the process of putting it on right now. Yeah. Um, they've changed it a lot over the years, and it now is taking a really expensive time with it to figure out exactly how you would use Google Analytics on a fishing page if a fishing page got fetched. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example. I get the FBI's Cyber Division bulletin, and one of the things that I really struck me. Uh, I think it was it was past January. I said, "What some of the hackers are doing now is they'll hack your website and they'll put ransomware on your website. It won't do anything to you, but I visit your website and I get the ransomware virus and I get ransomware. Yeah. So they're basically yeah, they're, yeah. your your website's just a tar baby at that point. You don't know it. Can they tell how how they got it?" Through my website, can who tell the person who got hacked? If can I? Uh, can anybody tell? It's forensically difficult, but not yeah. impossible to trace it back to you. It, and it, and part of that again depends on time. If 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 I visit your website and I get hit within twelve hours or twenty four <clears throat> hours with a ransomware attack, then one of the things that I'm gonna have my forensic guy say is where did I go that this that might have caused this to happen? If I know, for example, that I haven't opened any phishing emails, I don't open emails from people I don't know, period. Block, forget it. Never happened. I don't care who they are. They can be old fashioned, call me on the phone and we'll talk. But they send me an email, I don't know who they are, it gets deleted. Now, so but if if they wait if I get infected with ransomware and they don't activate that ransomware for a month, then it's going to be a lot harder to trace it back to you. But neither of us has any control over that. Yes, Lori. So I was shocked by our conversation when you told me that no website couldn't be hacked. Every website out there could be hacked. Yeah, um, any website can be hacked. Any, any website. Who is your, your ideal market? Is it small business, large business? Or both? Depends. Um, what we have found is that on the consumer market, there's a lot of education that needs to take place because most folks don't realize what's going on. When you get to the enterprise model, it's a little bit easier because there's more risk. At, they, those people perceive more risk, uh, so that's a little bit easier, I think. And, and my own particular background when I was in Seattle was doing business with Fortune 1000 companies. So when you sit down with people and, and they're, the CIOs and the, and the CFOs, the chief financial officers, are beginning to wake up to the fact that things like Target can happen to anybody, and it costs them a lot of money when it does. So they're starting to be more sensitive to it. Uh, Jesse, having worked with Wells Fargo and Credit Suisse, when you're talking about the banks, 
they are really sensitive to this stuff. So again, it, it's industry specific. The people in the healthcare industry are, because of HIPAA, they're very sensitive to it as well because the last thing they need is a website where they've got people coming in and HIPAA information is involved that hackers could read if they were on the website. So that makes it a little bit easier. Yes, sir. You said that uh, a longer a website has been hacked is more difficult to clean it up. Yes. How much it costs when somebody has been, his website has been hacked for four months, six months, now you want to clean it up. How much it costs them? It just depends on the website. I mean, there's some services that do that for a fixed price. And even in the WordPress world, um, not you know, there's no two of them that are the same simply because of all the plugins that people and purposes that they bring the website up. WordPress itself is a blog. That's how that's how it got so popular. And then people will add it on to that blog with these plugins. So there's like sixty thousand different plugins for WordPress. So if you want to get if somebody, which this has happened to me, I mean, if I get a call off the open net with somebody with a hacked website, uh, at the time I was doing that, I was pretty much charging by the hour that it took me to clean it up. And you can imagine that somebody doesn't want that to be open-ended. Uh, so it can range from like, I don't know, some service, 150 bucks to like 500 bucks thousand dollars depending on the on the size of it and what you have. I've had people come to me and that had their whole database deleted. And it's kinda of like, wow, do you have any backups? No. Uh oh. We're in trouble, you know. Um, so basically I, I think the answer to your question is probably hundreds of dollars. Uh, for a regular consumer yeah, website. Yeah. But if you've got a shopping cart where people are buying and, and credit card information has been going across your system, then you could be talking thousands of dollars rather than money. Thank you. Yeah. You know, in the finance world, we have a concern called audit proofs. I guess this concern for this how is it just um, hacker. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just pretty much at the uh, audit proof and then he's saying hacker proof. Yeah, I, I think what we're going to, again, just. Ted with his lawyer hat on now, because I'm still a licensed member of the North Carolina Bar, so I can say this without somebody saying you're practicing law without a license. But I think what we are going to be seeing now is that best practice is going to require something like what we're doing. Because otherwise, people who own business websites are putting their customers at fairly substantial risk <clears throat> by not knowing what's going on on their website. So I think from an audit compliance point of view, I think it's going to become something that's going to be required. In, 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 in terms of, uh, nothing is happening, for them, but what we did, because I've also had WordPress websites with security plugins on them, and because there's a vulnerability on the website, first these guys knew about it, and the first thing they did was to say, so, and I had them do it twice on this one website, I didn't get the vulnerability patch notes, and they were back a couple of weeks later and disabled the, the security plugin again. So the way we deal with that is, that's why we have an external scanner. So if a hacker gets in, they can delete our client. But our external scanner comes in the next scan. It's not there. You're going to get an alert that says, "We had a failure to scan your site. You need to check it out." Because it could have easily come as, "Oh, I see this plugin here. Delete it." Um, that's a, that's a big red flag. If if our yeah. system can't get to your our website client. because our client is not responding, it could be because your website is down for maintenance, and that would be okay. But our point is. It's, it's what in the security business we call a serious indicator of compromise. So it has to be taken. We tell people, you got to take that seriously. And we got we communicate with you in a back channel, right? Email. So we send you an email and say, hey, you had a scan failure. You need to check it out. Now, you may know if you're the administrator and you're getting these emails, you know you have the site down. So that just confirms that, yeah. that we're checking on you. you know? 
Um, and then the other part of this is, is what they could attempt to do if we kept the scan data on the website, then they could tinker with that. And uh, not delete anything, so it looked like everything's fine, but then they would just tinker with that so that when you do a difference, it never looks like anything changes. So they can't do that because the data is the data is not on their site, not on the website. The data is on our cloud servers. And uh, so when we get that next snapshot, because we digitally sign the files, they could try to mess with the timestamp or something like that, or the size, there's all sorts of ways to try to stealthy. Um, but they can't, they can't do anything. And we're gonna get it and bring it back to our, our place. If it doesn't match up, we're gonna let you know that uh, these files changed. And you might want to check them out, especially it's got a, or new ones. If new ones show up and it's got a kooky name in it, like with a question mark or something like that, or some kind of funky name, which a lot of them use, uh, that you'll immediately know, uh oh, oh, one, I got a vulnerability, two, I got a bad file on my site, and this is the one that I need to worry about. <coughs> and then you can go, excuse me, Justin. Yeah. As a consumer, how do I know that a site is Did you hear the question? As a consumer, how do I know that a, that a site is protected? That I'm, yeah. that I'm visiting? Uh, I, you really don't. I, I mean, thought, I don't know if you know who they are, the people that issue digital certificates for uh, secure communications, so they'll give you a, a graphic that you can put on your site so that when you're going secure communication to that site, you know who the actual vendor of it is, and so you know that at least that site's using a reputable digital certificate. That's one thing, but otherwise, <clears throat> reputation almost. Yeah, the only thing I can tell you, for instance, for the website that I've got for my novel, I'm going to have a, an icon on it that says WordFence is being used, and I'm going to have another icon that says we're being used. So you'll know that you know there are security plugins that are working like, on that website. Amazon. I'm sorry. Like, like Amazon's website, big big company. Yeah. I mean, they're not immune to the vulnerabilities. They they don't always tell people either. They're supposed to, but um, and Facebook, for goodness sake, too. Uh, there's various attacks. Those types of sites are vulnerable to, uh, and they're constantly trying. I mean, Amazon's it's open season you know, every day with their entire cyber team. Yeah, see, one of the big problems is people want to have websites that are interactive and have a lot going on because that attracts people to the website. That means they're using a lot of plugins. The more plugins you have on your website, the more vulnerabilities you have. Because hackers are constantly looking for vulnerabilities in, in plugins. There's some hackers, that's all they do. They look for a vulnerability in a plugin, then they post it on the dark web. Here's a, a vulnerability. That's what we call a zero-day attack, which means the security industry, Norton, McAfee, they don't know about this. And it takes days, sometimes weeks, for them to find out that that vulnerability is out there. So there's a period of time when none of the endpoint protection is going to help you. That's another reason. And, and so the more plugins you have, that just means, that's like the truck stop that I was talking about that's got... 50 doors as opposed to five doors. It just makes it that much easier to get in. So the more complex, the bigger the website, the more plugins, the more ways if I'm a hacker I've got to get in without being without being detected. So Dan, I'm going to take the last question. How can this community do for you? Perhaps. How can we Well, we've already said, I mean, we we'd love to uh, to talk, I would love, like I said, I'd love to talk to some contracting officers. I worked, <clears throat> when I was in law school, I worked on the Jordan Reservoir. I worked with the district engineer down in Wilmington, and my God, the contracts that we had to build that lake and that dam were amazing. So I have some experience, and I also had some experience when I was on the West Coast, but I really would like to talk to some folks who are issuing contracts and, and find out. You know, what works, what makes their life easy, what makes their life hard. Uh, so I'd, I'd love that, anybody that has those kinds of connections. 
and, and of course the connection to the North Carolina Military uh, Business Center across the street is we know about it. We don't know anybody over there. So introductions over there and, and getting the opportunity to talk with them will be a really big help too. Yep. Sure. I mean, if you know anybody that wants to do a trial with us, I'll get glad. I think I gave you my card. You did, and I didn't even need some. I'll get some cards. Uh, yeah, just contact me. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so if you've got a if you got a WordPress website and you'd like to try it for six months for free, just let us know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Glad having you.